trading at its best. Okay, once again, welcome everyone to the webinar. We're going to go ahead and get started here. I just had a, I had you guys go ahead and tell us where you're from. If this is the first time you've been to a webinar, one of our uh, weekly webinars, a couple a couple of you are first timers. We've got people from all over the world here: Canada, Scotland, Netherlands, Kansas City, Jamaica, Brazil, Denmark, Ontario. So that's really good. Glad to see we got people from all over the world here coming to learn something maybe that you you don't know 100% or you just want to learn more about. So if you're not familiar with how we do these, we post a blog uh, summarizing kind of the topic and then we hold the webinar and go into the detail and go to charts and things like that. Um, we, we've been trying to get on track where the, we get that blog post out earlier through in the week. We've just been so busy uh, working on our software and different things. So... Um, but, you know, we'll try. We'll see how it goes next week. Maybe we can get that out a little earlier so that everything's not so, you know, crammed together on Friday. But either way, I think you guys still probably had a chance to, to read the blog post. Um, but let me just introduce myself for those of you that are new. I'm Mike Swanson, and you've probably seen our latest software, Momentix, kind of making its way around. Um, and that's uh, a trading program I created. But uh, we started these weekly webinars just a couple months ago, um, and before that we did 101 webinars where it was war more basics. And we've we record all these sessions and put them on the same page where you sign up, and that's just tradewestforex.com forward slash webinars uh, forward slash weekly on on top of that. I'll post that link as well, so you guys can refer back to it if you end up having to go and you want to review the recording. So that's tradewestforex.com slash weekly slash webinar. So I just posted that in the chat. Okay, so today we will be talking about trading currency strength. And we're going to talk about what is currency strength and currency strength indicators. I'm going to show you some indicators on my charts and show you how those work. That will help really make sense of it with a nice little visual and then some strategies that you can use with currency strength. So how many of you ha uh, use currency strength currently in your trading? Just type in a Y or an N or yes or a no if you, if you currently use currency strength. So far it looks like it's quite a few of you do. Quite a few yeses saying you do. I mean, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of no's too. So, okay, well, I'm going to show you. We're going to co cover the basics, and then I'm also going to, um, you know, there's there's people that use it differently than others, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to, to you, you can use this stuff. But let me just show you um, before we jump into that. Okay, here is uh, the web page on the blog where we posted that information. Um, this is tradewithforex.com slash blog. This is where we've summarized the, uh, what we're talking about, and um, you can, re re can review previous posts. And the reason I'm bringing this up is last week we talked about currency correlation. Correlation is, uh, we're ta what we're looking at here is correlation between actual pairs. So, you know, the uh, euro dollar versus the U.S. franc has a highly negative correlation which causes them to move in a mirror of each other. So if you you might want to review that one if you didn't make it to last week's um, because that these kind of go together. But today's really is with currency strength we're actually now breaking the individual currencies out. So you know if we have the euro dollar of course it's made up of the euro currency and you know the euro dollar and uh, the US dollar. So what we're going to be looking at is how you can analyze those currencies individually and then plot them against each other so that you can find strength and weakness between the two currencies. See, if you're looking at just the euro dollar by itself, let me bring up some charts here really quick. If you're looking at the euro dollar by itself, you're not seeing the big picture. You're not seeing that there are, you know, 10 to 20 or so, depending on your broker, there's there's many other pairs that have euro in it or that have dollar in it. 
So let me bring up my charts. Here we go. Okay. Give me one second. This was going to reload this indicator. Okay. So anyways, um, if you look here at my market watch window, look how many different pairs in here are have the euro. Just for the ones I have listed here, there are six different pairs that are you know, you know, commonly traded. So if you've got six different pairs with Euro, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you've got, and you've got the dollar on the other side, if you're looking at Euro dollar, for example, like we are here, there are also quite a few pairs that have dollar in it. I mean, we could go through and you can see Australia dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, US franc, US CAD, US yen. There's a whole bunch of pairs that have US dollar in it. So, you know, what the people that uh, are using currency strength are looking at it as if I look at the euro dollar by itself, um, I'm not seeing what's really going on because you know I don't know which per cur or which currency is really moving the uh, moving this pair. Is it the euro that's weak, or is it the dollar that's uh, strong when the market's moving? And how can you find that information out before the move or during the move so you can trade it? So uh, let me show you this. What, there's currency strength indicators that attempt to um, combine these, all these different currencies available, and then uh, they apply a weight to each pair. So without trying to make it too technical and confusing, it's basically they're able to um, get everything on the same level. So they add all the euro currencies together, and they have a... Uh, um, a line that'll show up for the euro. As you can see here, I'm going to show you on this indicator. It'll show a line for the euro and a line for the dollar. Okay, so you've probably seen a lot of these will do even more than than just um, two pairs. Let me see if I've got another one here. Uh, I can't remember if I had. Yeah, here's another one. I've got them turned off, but if I go into here, uh, let me turn on a bunch of pairs. You'll see. This is this is probably what you guys have seen is indicators that plot a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of lines all messed up with each other and I'm going to show you what that all means so let me load this on another chart oops okay yeah Kenny says there are seven pairs or currencies in uh, each base currency uh, okay so here you go let me show you this this indicator this is what you've probably seen a lot of systems do or indicators that have currency strength involved what we have here is it looks like a big mess of lines what's really what we're really seeing here is individual currencies all neutralized so that they can be compared against each other so you see when the one when they're really high when it gets up here at the top, that currency, which if I hover over it, is the euro. The euro is was really strong. It was stronger than all other currencies. That explains the move on the euro dollar. Now, if the dollar was strong as well, if these were both moving up, dollar and euro, then you wouldn't have seen this euro dollar move, even though the euro was really strong. So if we look in here for the dollar, it was, uh, I think that's the red line. Let me see here. Maybe not green yeah green so see this was the perfect combination you had euro gaining strength and the green the dollar was uh, weakening so they're crossing over back here and moving in opposite directions right in this area right here the actual crossover took place let's see and I'll explain crossovers and things here in a minute but but actually you what your your first uh, signal warning would have been about right here <laughs> which was pretty much close to the bottom. It's not always going to be that perfect. Um, as you guys probably know, if you've traded currency strength, it doesn't always work out perfectly, but it's a, it can sometimes give you that early warning or confirmation in your strategy. You know, if you're applying other tools and techniques, this is one that's 
that's worth adding. Um, so yeah, Kenny says that there's eight currencies you can pair up. 49 currency pairs is what he's saying. Okay, so so the idea, like you can see here, is you can you, you can at any given time, you can go and see what currency is the weakest and, the, and which ones are the strongest. So if you look here right now, currently, the Australia dollar currency is extremely weak against the strongest currency is the franc. So let's just go bring up the Australia franc for a minute here. We'll look at that pair, and, and maybe you guys can tell me what do, what do you think is going to happen if the if we're looking here that recently we've seen it go from right here they crossed over and they moved apart from each other, so we have Frank strong Australia weak. Which direction do you think the Australia dollar or Australia Frank went? Okay, we got some of you saying down. Okay, yep, that's right. So the reason why it went down is because Australia is the first currency in the pair and the franc is the second currency. So if the first currency is weak, that makes the currency go down. If it was the other way around, if the franc was weak and the Australia was strong, that would push that pair up. Very easy. Um, so if we drag this currency over here, we'll be able to see, there you go. And there was a pretty significant move. That's the other thing about currency strength is uh, when you see these kind of, uh, you know, this extreme, when one's going up and one's going down, they're actually moving opposite of each other. That's when you get big moves in the market. See this, this massive move overnight, the last couple hours? Uh, I guess it was this morning. 143 pips. When they, as soon as they crossed over from each other and started moving apart, there was a significant move. Because what happens here is if, if one is moving down, that sometimes is not enough. I can go show you many cases where one of them is making a nice run, but the, the other is kind of following right along. And that's when you'll see this little consolidation. Um, but if they're moving opposite, you get these significant moves that take off. Okay. Uh, so someone's asking, what's the best time scale to use? That really just depends on your trading style. If you're a day trader and you're looking to take a lot of active trades, you'll probably trade on the 5 or 15 minute, maybe the 30 minute. If you're more of a swing trader or just checking in on your trades, you'll be on the hour, 4 hour, and daily. That's the way I always look at time frames. I can't really, you know, I never really just pick a time frame and say that's the best time frame to trade because the only way to really know that is how much time do you have to watch your charts and check on things and how long do you want to be in your trades. So these indicators are, are some that I've kind of modified and I've been playing with and so I don't have these in a version that I can hand, you know, hand them out but you should be able to, um, you know, there's, there's, there's other currency indicators that are available out there. I'm hoping that maybe I don't know. I don't have a time frame for this, but um, I'm hoping I can eventually get this into some kind of uh, production format, I guess you could say, so that you guys can download these as well. I was hoping maybe I could have that for this webinar, but this one kind of creeped up on us kind of quickly. Well, I've just been working with these indicators for only a short amount of time. so. But we'll all keep you guys updated over the next few weeks, and um, we'll see if we can see what we can do there. But anyways, let's do this. Let's go back and let's see if I can show you. Look, let's look at this one right here, okay? You've got Euro versus um, Frank. Do you see how these were both strong and moving up? So this blue line is the Frank, the brown line is the Euro. Do you see at this time how they kind of just followed each other? And for the most part, they are following each other. Well, if we go back to what we taught last week about currency correlation, we know that when there's a significant move in the euro, the euro dollar, for example, that there's a significant move the opposite direction in the euro or U.S. franc. So that makes sense. So what do you guys think this is going to do if we go bring up the euro franc cross pair? If you see them mo both moving the same direction and pretty much following each other, what do you think that currency pair is going to look like? flat. 
sideways, steady. A whole bunch of your, that's what you're saying is it's going to look flat. So let's go take a look. I had some, I have a comment that we're just looking at past trades and um, let me go back here. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys right now. I'm just explaining the concepts um, about currency strength and kind of what to expect when things happen. In a minute here, I will show you the um, uh, some strategy you can use because, like someone's saying, a lot of times it tells you what happens when it's already over and done, and that's right. That's what it looks like, but there is some strategy you can use here, and I'm gonna show you what I've put together. Okay, so here you go. There was the market or the uh, pairs. Strength, both of them are strong and moving. So if we were to go look at each of these individually, there's big moves probably on these on pairs that involve those currencies. But when you trade them together on the same pair, there you are, flat, choppy market. It starts to move a little bit right here, and that's when they start to kind of go apart from each other a little bit. But when they're right on top, you get that choppiness. So hopefully this makes sense now when you look at these indicators, what it you know, how it's really affecting uh, pairs that are made up of, uh, you know, of two currencies that you look at on your strength indicator. So, you know, instead of trading euro franc here, you'd want to be trading dollar, you know, euro dollar again, or uh, U.S. franc. You know, you go look at U.S. franc right here, and I can tell you, you know, that's going to be which direction? Big move down, right? Dollar down, Frank up. Let's go see. So if we mark that, you know, somewhere right in here, that's where a big move will have taken place on the U.S. Frank. So if we switch over, there you go. Huge move. Was anybody involved in this big move? I know I was watching the market just get destroyed, dollar get destroyed from uh, the Fed speech on, I think it was Wednesday. Did anybody profit from that lose I'm just curious because you can see here this is not a normal move for almost 340 pips on the US franc most of it came in three hours and a good chunk of it came in that last hour anyways see if now this would have if you're using currency strength you could have at least been uh, using this as a filter for which side you're gonna trade okay so that's let me show you some strategies now guys What you can do is you can trade the strength of, um, or the direction of the strength. So you, what you do is you look at where it crossed over. You can look where it crossed over. Let me go ahead and back up and mark that. It might be kind of hard to see. And that's why sometimes I'll go in and turn off, like you can see I've done over here. Uh, let's just use this one. You can turn off other currencies so you can just see uh, two, the two currencies that you need, which I've done here, is the, uh, uh, I guess this is uh, yen and euro. Let's do that. Let's go look at euro yen then while I've got it set up. Okay. So here's where the crossover was. Actually, I'm just going to stick with this one. It's not hard. Let me just go back. So here's the U.S. Our dollar is green and the franc was blue. So if we go back, they crossed over right there. So what you could do, one way you can use these type of indicators is only take sell trades on the U.S. franc in this case. You only want to be selling dollar when it's below the U.S. franc on strength. It means it's getting weak. So you can use it as a trend direction or you know trade direction filter. So from that point on, you would be trading it short. Now when it crossed back up right here, you can flip to long. And this is when they're starting to go mimic each other or kind of bounce around and the market kind of goes flat. But um, when the markets are active and trending and moving, you can uh, be more likely to be on the right side. Um, and someone's asking, could you flip down to a lower time frame to find a better entry? Yeah, you can definitely always do that. If you're trading on hourly charts and you've got a signal, um, you know, you could always flip down to a lower time frame, wait for a pullback. You know, for example, right here, the signal, you know, when that bar closed, telling you to go short or stay on the short side was right here at that at that price line that I just put on. So if we were to go down to um, go down to the 
say 15 minute if we go down to the 15 minute we can see that that price was right here and you can see it, everything was kind of start, starting to flatten out so you know you could possibly wait through that flat period until it starts to break again and wait till the uh, dollar picks up some strength against that franc which was right here you know and that way you would have been more confirmed and you would have just got a quick trade caught a nice 178 pips in in maybe two hours by doing that way so there's lots of options here this is just one way though I'm going to show you a few others how you can use these indicators um, something I'll show you what I've done is I'm going to show you another indicator this one here is uh, I've got some filters applied to it so that it tries to filter that flatness so you see here when it's flat and choppy and they're really close it won't show anything uh, when I start there's a significant move taking place then I will um, plot these green these green bars will be plotted telling me to buy if it's red that means it's it's expecting it to come out of that choppiness and sell so see it would have looked like this you would have sold right here right on that bar and we would have bought over here so you'll see we're, we're filtering so we're not going to get the bottom we're not going to buy the very bottom or sell the best top um, but we can trade uh, we can trade these pretty successfully still and capture a majority of the move another thing we can do is once it reaches an extreme and turns back we can use that as an exit so right here on this bar when it comes over uh, starts to turn over and come back so when the strength of the uh, euro in this case is turning back we can close it out right there let me make sure to I've got this is on US franc euro dollar okay so um, so this is another little indicator. This is just filtering, like I say, filtering the flat parts, trading the crossover, but waiting, um, waiting for some uh, some significant separation, and then when it turns back, you could use that as an exit. Same thing over here. It gets out to one of these extremes, starts to turn back. Right here, you'd be out. Maybe even a little sooner, possibly. Okay, so that's one way. Now let me uh, let me go back to let's go back to this and let me show you another thing you can do um, is look for divergences. How many of you are familiar with what divergence is? We briefly talked about it in one of our past weekly webinars. Okay, someone says absolutely. I am. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well. For those of you that aren't really sure, we'll do a quick summary of what divergence looks like. Basically, they can be a, there can be a divergence in any oscillator-based indicator. That means you know when it, you've got price up here and your indicator down at the bottom oscillating between you know a high and a low, and you can see just like this indicator, it's bouncing back and forth. The RSI does that, the MACD, the uh, uh, stochastics all of those are oscillators that you can have divergences and basically a divergence is any time the price is moving the opposite direction of the indicator so we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like here okay let's see we might need to go to a more cleaned up chart um, so we don't have a million lines but Let's see. Let me uh, let me see if we can. I can spot one without moving. Okay, so we're on U.S. franc. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to go over. We're going to zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so what we're going to do? We're going to be looking at the swing lows and swing highs on the price compared to the swing lows and swing highs on the currency strength indicator in this case and so what we're going to look for since we're on dollar franc we're only going to be looking at this brown line um, actually not brown the blue line franc and the green line dollar 
And what we want to see is, see right here, the price is making lower lows, indicator is making lower lows. So that's normal. It's when the price starts to make higher highs, for example, and the indicator makes lower highs. Or, you know, it's any time it's the opposite is what you're looking for. So let's see if we can spot something. Spot one of those. And I'm just going to look at dollar. It can be either the dollar currency doing it or the franc currency. Okay, so let's see. Brown, let's see, we got blue line is franc. Okay. Okay, this one's really close. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is It doesn't always have to be perfect, and this is one that's a little off. But look how the price came very close to this low. If you've seen this happening, if you're trying to decide, is this giant move going to continue? Here's how divergence and a, diver, a divergence approach could have helped you find that out. So if you're right here, maybe you decided that you thought this move was over. Okay, Let's say you saw it start to pull back up, so you bought right here. And so you're starting to get into profit, 20 or 30 pips, but then it starts to turn back down, and you're thinking, you're trying to wonder if you, maybe your stop even is getting really close, or you're trying to decide if you should get out. Well, as the price comes down, here's where you could uh, look at the euro uh, or the dollar currency. Look at that previous low. Look what happened. Look what it took to drive that much movement down. That strength of the dollar was it was very weak. Even the franc was, or uh, yeah, the franc was even slightly positive, or you know, a lot of it, that was really what was driving it even faster. But, but anyways, let's look, just look at what happened, where we're down here, way at the bottom. But then, when it starts to attempt to go lower, it wasn't really getting very weak. So you see how there's this, it's much higher, where the low was very close, but the indicator is much higher. That's not a, a perfect divergence. The divergence, would, we would have liked to have seen this. We would have liked to see it penetrate that low just a little bit, and that could help you find out if it's going to be a false breakout. But this is really close. We might be able to find another one. Jans is saying there was a better one on 10.7. Uh, so I can, I can go back and look at that too. But anyways, um, this one still, I would have considered this. If I would have seen the price coming down, uh, this would have been a way either to add to my position and scale in here or just, you know, know that it's worth holding on since it's it's actually not very weak here. As well as the uh, U.S. franc, if we drew a line on the U.S. franc, or the franc, sorry, the franc currency at that time, it was actually the same thing. It was making a lower high. So neither one of those were strong enough to break that price. Now, if this was going up, making, uh, you know, gaining more strength and this one was much lower or even making a lower low, I would not want to be buying right here. I would probably sell in that case. Okay, so let me see. You're saying at 10.7 or 7.10. Let me see. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, yeah, I see that right here. Okay, here you go. Here's a sign to sell. Look at price. Failing to climb back up and make a higher high. But look what happened to the dollar. Somewhere right in here, you can see the green. And then right there is the top. See how it's going the opposite direction? So the dollar's sitting here gaining strength. But the franc, if you look at the brown line, um, or blue line, keep mixing those up, the franc was actually going the, uh, the other direction. It was heading down. So there's the blue line. Do you see how they're moving opposite, but price was moving down? That's your signal to do the opposite here, knowing that that, that's, that fight for the market to try to head back up is not going to hold, and that's when you sell. Does that make sense to everyone? These are going to be not. These aren't going to show up as often as like crossovers um, 
and, uh, and things like that. But you can still find uh, you can still find these. You know, you, you can go on many different currencies and time frames uh, and pairs, and you can uh, you can still find a lot of these setups. But um, but yeah, this is uh, that would have been a very good one there, of course. Nice big sell move, showing that divergence that the dollar really wasn't gaining strength against the franc. So that's when you sell it and make a profit on the way down. Okay, um, let's see. We could probably find a few more examples of that, or I've got another another little tool. This one's more of just a, a correlation table. That's something um, I might also see if I can publish and post with our correlation po uh, uh, blog post. But this is that an act a live table of currency correlations, and so I can see you know when it's when you've got a high number. Their currencies are going to move in the same direction. A low number, they're going to move in opposite directions. So if you kind of couple that with currency strength, you can actually build a, uh, a strategy where you've got a couple pairs running at the same time working together. And so I kind of mentioned that, that on the blog. This one might get a little confusing. But let me go ahead and, and try to show you how this could work. Um, I, should, I could probably just use the currencies I've got here too. You've got Australia dollar versus U, uh, Australia CAD. So those two pairs, excuse me, those two pairs are, are most likely moving in the same direction. Um, and I've got this just on a five minute. I might want to use a more long term approach, but but yeah, even on the hourly, you go hourly there at 0 0.89, 0 0.98 on the 15, uh, all the way down to the five minute. So it's it's showing that they're they're moving very close together. So what we could do is go go look at these three currencies involved: Australia, U.S. dollar, and uh, Canadian Canadian dollar. Let's let's go over to and see if I can look at those three on my little currency strength meter. I'm just going to put the Australia dollar on here. Okay, so we've got the um, Orange line is Australia currency. You can see that one's, you know, that's been the one moving the market. Um, and then let's see, we wanted to have the, I think it was the yen. Let me just double check that. Uh, CAD, Canadian, okay. So the Canadian currency, Canadian dollar is, i trying to see which one that one is here. Okay, that's the, is that a brown? Purple. They're really close to get, uh, together. You know, here's something I could do: is I could just uh, while we're looking at these, I could make it thicker. So there's our purple. There's the um, orange line, and then dollar is green. Okay, so there's those three. Now we can see they kind of stand out for us. Okay, so if we know that. Um, those currencies, by you know, if you trade trade them together or moving together, we can pair these up. We can decide which ones to trade by seeing which one is really the weak currency and which one's the strongest. So you can see the two that are mo moving together is the uh, dollar and the um, Canadian U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar. So um, then, basically, what that means is is if you've got the uh, if you've got the Australia currency is the one that's going really weak, uh, what you could actually do is trade both of these. This is that case where, if you guys remember in the correlation I was talking about, there's those times when you can still trade both pairs in the same direction. Um, and even though it, it, it increases your risk, you have a, a greater chance of being right if you pair it up with something like currency strength here. So if we were to go back where that crossover took place of all of these, be right about there. That's when the last one crossed over. We would trade this currency short, right? Because Australia, we know it's going to move down if it's crossing down. We would tra uh, trade this one short. And we could also trade the other two short because now we know we have a direction. Do you guys remember we, um, we talked about that's kind of the key piece of trading correlation um, correlated pairs is you kind of have to, if you're going to trade where they go apart and come back, if you guys remember where 
you know, you look at the hourly and it's 90%, but the five minute is 20% um, or negative 20, that they're going to come back. Here was a way of finding out which direction to trade it. Hopefully that makes sense. You might want to review the correlation webinar, but and I can show you an example here. But this is uh, this is a way you could do it. Let me let's see if I can show you one without getting it too making it too confusing. Okay, so what we could do is we could go find a long term a long term correlation and then try to find a short term that's the opposite or you know kind of things are not normal. It's it's way off track and it's probably going to come back. So let's see. We got Australia yen versus Australia cad is positive 0.96. You go to five minute, it's positive 0.71. So that's not a big enough difference. Um, let's see. Let's go. Yeah, let's look at that one. The Euro, Australia. Okay, that one's that one's close. I'd like to see a really big difference here, but let's see. Australia yen, Euro, Australia. Um, let's see, 0 0.81, 0 0.68. The, the biggest one I can really see is, um, I think it was that Euro, Euro Australia versus Australia CAD. So those two, you see how it's 0.94 on the hourly, but on the five minute, it's 0.58, so it's kind of off. What we could do is we can go to our hourly, Euro Australia versus Australia CAD. So we have Euro, Australia, and CAD. So let's go back here and make it so we can see those. So Euro is going to be, uh, I think that was the maroon one. We'll double check that. Yeah, okay. So here we go. We can go on to our hourly first. We want to see which direction that they uh, um, have been moving for the last on the are based on the hourly correlation. So that's over here. Go back to that table. So they were it's positive 0.94 Euro Australia versus Australia CAD. So that should be Euro CAD. Euro versus CAD is um, the brown line versus this uh, purple line. See, they were. Uh, it was Euro moving down, Australia move, or CAD moving up. Okay, and that crossed over back right there. So we would only want to be selling. So see how we was able to pick that direction. Um, actually, let me get the. Uh, let's get one of those currencies on here now. We could go with either one. You know, the uh, Euro Australia or Australia CAD. Let's go take a look at the Australia CAD. Okay, there you go. Sell that pair. You could sell right on that crossover because, or you know, when you knew there was that difference, that one was off, um, you know, you could have either traded that short or when you saw the extreme when it went from positive 0.94 or whatever it was to that uh, down to like 0.5 or even it probably got closer to zero maybe down here. You could have actually used it as an exit and maybe a reversal somewhere in here and catching that bottom and trying to pick where it's going to turn back up. So uh, hopefully that one's going to, I know that one's going to seem confusing. It's, it's going to be something that, uh, like I say, on these, a lot of you are still asking about these indicators. Like I say, um, I really don't have it in a, a position that it can work, I guess you could say, for different brokers and price feeds and situations. Uh, well, I need to basically make some ad adjustments to it for it to work for uh you know, for various platforms and setups. Uh, I was, like I said, I was hoping I could, I could release the indicator as part of the blog post, but instead I'll have to come back and, uh, uh, you know, once I get it in that position, I can come back and update the blog post. And in one of our, fu our future weekly webinars, we'll, we'll update, update you on that when that's available. Um, but for now, most, this is uh, how most currency strength indicators work anyway. This is not, this one's nothing special. Um, I guess on this one here, I did a little bit more work so I could filter out the flat periods. And then uh, this here is uh, just a correlation, live correlation table. That one I, I could probably put together and try to get it uploaded. But that is uh, 
Um, that's something we talked about in the last webinar that's more about correlation. But anyways, um, if you guys have any questions now, I'll take some questions and then we'll be wrapping this one up. Um, just don't get too confused is the key here. I know that some of the stuff I, the last parts I talked about were a little bit more confusing. Even if you just use it in the basic form that I've shown you, um, it can make a big difference in your trading, especially just using it as a trend direction filter, using it as a way of knowing um, which side of the market you want to be on so that you can have a better chance of uh, not being caught on the wrong side of something like you know, that we saw in the euro dollar with the Fed announcement or a speech, 420 pip move. And as we know, if we go, if we go back here and, and turn on, let's see, I'll just make this one thicker. That's the uh, euro versus the dollar. Well, the crossover of the two, got another one still on the franc. We know that the crossover of the two happened right there. I would have only wanted to be a buyer here because the euro was stronger than the dollar. So if that's all you use it for, that can help you tremendously of uh, keeping you on the right side of the market. Okay, I'll go ahead and answer some of these questions we've got coming in here. Uh, oscillators are indicators that have measurements from 0 to 100, I believe. Um, yeah, not all oscillators are 0 to 100. I know that uh, RSI goes from like positive 100 to negative 100. Um, the MACD doesn't really have a defined point, kind of like this indicator. doesn't have defined maximums and minimums. There's just extremes that you can see. It's really more of a, there's a neutral, there's a zero line involved. So there's a zero line that things hover around, and then they they hit these extremes and come back to neutral at zero. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see here. Yeah, some of you are asking if you can buy this indicator or, and um, you know, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm trying to see if, if I release it, rather than it having this big mess of lines, because there can be some improvements is what I'm thinking, is if I, you know, I can get in here and clean it up and make it more user-friendly and work with various platforms and different digits, price feeds, and things like that, then we could make it available, you know, make it a low-cost indicator that you guys could, you could play around with. But I'd have to put some work into it and do that. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted. I know that it kind of, it's not the best situation to, be, to see all this stuff and then not be able to access it. But, you know, it's something that wouldn't be too difficult for us to put together. So we'll, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, you can get the previous correlation webinar on our blog. Just go to tradewestforex.com slash blog and you'll find... Uh, You'll find all the past posts and links to where the replays are at and everything. Like I'll show you here. If you click on uh, right here even, sign up and watch the replays here, you just scroll down and there you go. There's the webinar replays. You can see here it is. Last week's was currency correlation July 5th. We talked about trading the news before that. Technical indicators, mirror trading, trading mistakes, robots. So there's lots of replays you can go watch here. And that's where this one will be uploaded as well. We usually get it up the same day, so a couple hours after the webinar. Yeah, some of you are saying that you like it better than currency meters. You like the line approach where you just see the crossovers. and Yeah, so there are different ways it can be plotted. Can these filters be automated, which will minimize confusion and emotions? Yeah, that's what I've kind of done with... Um, that other little, that other little indicator that looks, I'll show you right here. You know, this is where those filters have been applied. So I, like I showed you, when it was green, I would be a buyer. And it was a nice move up. When it's red, I'd be a seller. Here we are, recent trade, buyer. And so, you know, it won't be perfect. Here's a time where it said to sell, and then it kind of fizzled out. But you just get out. 
when it goes back, take a small loss. At least you're going to know, you can know you'll be on the right side of a big move every single time. You're never going to be fighting a move like this. You're always going to be on the right side. That's the nice thing about currency strength indicators. If I scroll through, as you guys can see here, big move down, you're on the correct side all the way through that move. You might get a little blip in here, like this one right here, where the it's market's really choppy. It says to buy. You get caught on the wrong side, take a small loss. And then when it says to sell, jump on it and ride the bigger bigger profit. That's the key with most systems is trying to get that risk to reward ratio up. And this is a little indicator I've been playing with that's able to do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, we do send an email out too, Jan, so, so you should get an email uh, posting the replay as well. Well, I think we've answered some good questions here. Um, we'll get this recording up so you guys can review it. And like I said, we'll keep you posted on these indicators. I know a couple of you are, you just actually want to buy it. And, you know, that's, that's probably what we, if, if it's something that we have enough interest in, you know, then it's worth our time. You know, we can get in and... Uh, it's worth putting in a bunch of time. You know, this there's a lot of work involved building in these indicators and things. So, you know, it kind of it if there's only a few people interested, then I know it sounds kind of bad to say this, but it's like it's not really usually it's not worth it if there's just a few of you that are interested. But I can see a lot of you want it. Obviously, this is something that can help with your trading. So, uh, I'm sure many more will want it or you know try it out and see. So we'll see if we can put something together. We'll keep you guys posted. Some of you are just saying, I'd like to buy it. Buy it, please. Okay. Well, we'll let you know. Keep in touch with us. Keep coming to these weekly webinars every week, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Herman's saying to have a poll now. Who would, who wants the indicator? We could do that, I guess. How many of you, if we could put this in, you know, make a, make this a cheap offer that you guys could, we could put this together, put some work into it, some filters like we've talked about. How many of you would want to purchase it? I know I've showed you, I told you, there's a lot of free tools out there. Some of them just aren't the same or aren't really reliable, but so yeah, quite a few of you. <laughs> That's more than a few, so I will put it on our list of things to jump on and see if we can put it together for you guys. And we'll keep in touch with you, so just keep coming to these webinars, like I say. Keep keep an eye out on our emails, and we'll see if what we can do. See if we can pull something together. And and uh, so thanks thanks everybody for coming to the webinar. Um, if you have any questions, you can always go onto our website, use our live chat, or shoot us an email. And uh, we will hope to see you in next week's webinar. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk with you at, uh, in the next webinar next Friday.